I have one of these flexi boy scooters. What is important is this thing here. Pulling this lever causes the electric motor at the back to act as a brake and charge the battery in doing so. But it also activates the mechanical brake up front. What I want to do is create a button that only activates the electrical brake in hopes that it will extend the range of the scooter. And this is where our journey will take us first. I'll start by finding where these wires lead to. Doesn't seem like it wants to come off yet. Seems like this whole brake lever thing is sandwiched by this screw. It's another Phillips head screw? No, it's a... Oh! It's a torch screw! Where have you been all my life? Wait, why did they have Phillips screws underneath? The interesting choice! Oh no, what happened now? There's this spring. This was a bad idea. This was in line with the screw I just removed, so I thought that would be the screw, but no. Screw off. <laughs> ah, it's a heck. It's a hex. So we've already gone through Philips, Torx, and now Hexagon? Uh huh. Wait, do I even want to remove this? I did manage to pull this thing off after all. I removed the bell trigger for nothing. This is where the wires lead. What's going on here? Not a whole lot. This leads me to believe there's some magnets in this brake lever. That might be a reed switch. Reed switches can activate by magnetic fields. I'll grab some magnets. I would see my magnets have grabbed hold of uh, a lot of different things. I'm going to bring magnets near this box of wires. So now the magnet is close, and now it's far away. You'll be pulling the brake a lot. The mechanical switch would wear down over time. That's why I chose a reed switch for my robotic lawnmower garage. Which, if you haven't seen... I'm going to tap these wires. These are awfully thin, which has me a bit worried. Fuck, this is bad. There were uh, a lot of things went wrong. So one of these wires ended up getting cut. And then I, I cut all of the wires so I could solder longer wires on. And then when I tried attaching these, I pulled one of the wires out from the sensor. So now I just ended up taking this thing out. Out. Things aren't going very well! Turns out this is not a reed switch. It is actually a Hall effect sensor. It's similar to a reed switch. A reed switch is just a binary thing, so it's either on or off, whereas this is actually capable of measuring the intensity of the external magnetic field. I'm going to start removing the old leads, and I'm going to be replacing them with better ones. These leads are fucking terrible. They're so thin. I made a mental note. Mental. Now let's start soldering this thing on. I think I figured something out. The red wire you barely see here, that's likely the supply voltage line. So now I've attached the red probe to the red wire and the black probe to the black wire. The voltage is zero, but if we power it on, it's 3.3 volts, which is typical for these sorts of all effect sensors. The blue line likely communicates the state of the brake lever. So I have my power supply here set to 3.3 volts, connected to the red and black wires, and then I'm measuring the voltage on the blue line. What it's reading right now is 1.6 volts and just look what happens when I bring a magnet. It goes up to 2 point some volts. If I short a blue to red, that would trick the scooter so we would get a 3.3 volt reading on the blue line, which is probably the highest possible reading. So if I just touch a switch like this Cherry MX blue switch, I could press it, it would short it out. That would give you full regenerative braking. It might be a bit of a, oh, what happened? All right, so, all right. Shit. I will firstly attach this black wire here. I will also attach another black cable to this blue one. Now I want to attach these to the scooter. The wires are really short, so I'll be using some heat shrink solder sleeves because soldering wires that short, that close to the scooter is not gonna be fun. Oh, problem time. This is uh, the Hall effect sensor within its casing, which I had to modify a bit. I had to actually chip off some of the plastic behind this so I could make these thicker wires fit. Problem here is that if I place this in here, this doesn't want to go any deeper than this, 
which wasn't the way it was before. God fucking shit. So what I ended up doing was haphazardly cut away a piece of metal frame here so that the wires fit through this hole. What effect that will have on the long-term stability of this thing is still to be discovered, but hey, it works. These are the wires that should go to the external button. The switch will short these two wires together. It would be pretty cool if I could use one of these keycaps, would give it some personality. That then leaves the question of where to put the switch. The handlebars are articulating, so it would be a bit complicated to move wires to that side. The thing about this scooter is this whole handlebar folds down. When it's folded up, this bar here is used as a handle. My hand ends up between these two handbars here. I guess I could go cutting up a square into this plastic, but I don't want to destroy this any more than I already have. Actually, maybe it would be a good idea if I zip tied a holder for the Cherry MX switch around this. So the frame would attach through a zip tie here where you have room for it, but then it would extend here so that this button could be as close as possible to my index finger. That might actually be a pretty good idea. Let me get to designing the holder for this. I've put my part to printing. This is how it's going to look like on top of the brake pedal. Here we have a slot for a zip tie and then this holder for the switch slightly angled towards my left index finger. So here it is. We'll see if I can make my switch fit in here. Actually really good fit. Pretty surprised I was able to model it that well. Let's see how that feels. That's really good. So I was thinking of applying some double-sided tape on the back. Hmm. Well, that got rid of the switch nicely. Or... No! That's the keycap! The switch! I'll we'll leave that there overnight. It's been overnight now. And uh, I think I can start... Whoa! I think I'll continue later. So I'm thinking I'm leaving these wires to be a bit long so that I don't run into the same problem I did with the original wires which were far too short. Maybe actually just a couple of loops would be enough so that there's some strain relief in case it does end up getting pulled. Oh yes, it works. Let's fucking go! This is self-amalgamating tape. So it doesn't have this sort of like adhesive, but rather you sort of activate it by just stretching it out a bit. Oh fuck. The thing is that this thing starts to slowly bond with itself. Over time, it becomes like a watertight, continuous mass. That looks hideous. It's starting to be done, I think. So I took this thing for a drive. Firstly, this braking is quite abrupt, depending on speed. So if it's anything above like five or 10 kilometers an hour, you're gonna be looking at a serious boom. So I have an idea. If I implemented two buttons, one of which would not be directly shorting 3.3 volts to the blue line, but instead it would have a diode in series, so we could have some predictable voltage drops. So one of them would essentially have this shit your pants braking feeling. In line with that, I could put a Windows keycap on it. Pressing that button evokes the same sensation as using Windows sometimes it does. It's just hilarious to press the Windows button and then you end up shitting yourself. I mean, who doesn't want that? Now that I had the chance, I also made this a bit cleaner since now the wires are much more separated from here, so it's easier to wrap things around it. Here is the double button 3D print. I made it out of this cute pink PETG. I angled these. They are sort of rotating around some central axis. So when I have my finger here, button one, button two. So the angle is different. And overall, it's a bit more polished. So the black wires are what we had originally with a single button. But now I have attached two wires to each of these. So I decided that this one, which is easier to reach, is going to be the lighter break. And this is going to be the more abrupt break. Here we have this three diamond diode string. This will provide the voltage drop that whenever you press this button you hopefully don't shit your pants. <laughs> now the second button is a Kyle box ping. It's another clicky switch but it's obnoxiously loud. It's perfect! <laughs> I'll take it for a test drive real quick and see how it works. That was a great 
going about 20 kilometers an hour. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that pickup really lives up to its name. This button here has four diodes now, and the one on the right has three. With four diodes, roughly 0.7 each, we're looking at 2.8 volts drop off. Is that, can that really be? That makes a big difference. Before I added the diodes, braking was so intense that the rear tire would start slipping against asphalt. Secondly, if I'm carrying it with the right hand, these keys will bump into my leg occasionally, and that usually makes these keycaps fall out. Something I didn't consider, mechanical keyboards aren't designed that the keyboard is thrown around. Maybe they should be, considering usually they are used for gaming, for instance. My idea was that if I was going down a very steep hill, I could just charge the scooter and fold this down, because going down too fast is not only a bit dangerous, but it's also very inefficient. The aerodynamics of riding a scooter is shit. The human body wasn't designed to roll down a hill traveling over 30 kilometers an hour. Standing upright, that's a lot of energy wasted because of drag. But I have found that you can sort of pulse width modulate. Tap it repeatedly. That was much more bearable. It won't feel quite as jarring. So one of the reasons I wanted to also do this is that it saves the mechanical brake and it should also very slightly extend my range. Now, would I recommend that you do this if you have anything comparable that has the same sort of Hall Effect sensor? Honestly, I can't say. These videos are merely to document the extreme length to which my stupidity can go. And of course, if you don't know what you're doing, there's a great risk that your 1000 euro device will become a 1000 euro paper. So, you know, if that sounds exciting, I'm not taking any responsibility. Even if something goes wrong here, and I take this for a warranty repair, they're probably gonna tell me, oh, what the fuck is this piece of shit here? So you, you might end up voiding your warranty. Yeah, thanks for watching. I have come to Earth to abduct you all.